Well, my takeaway for today is very, very important, but I don't really know how to word it. It's a very sensitive matter. I don't want to upset anyone. I want to make sure I say it perfectly. Uh, and it's something that I've really been meaning to get off my chest for a while now. And I think now is the right time, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. Thanks for joining us in the boardroom. Our job is simple. We understand that what you see online has power. The power to make you feel. And you deserve to feel good. That's where we come in. Our dedicated team of analysts are on hand to review and discuss the internet's wildest, weirdest and most watchable videos. This is a place where there are no wrong answers. David Lowry, nobody's mug. Claudia Fjord, head of head. Callum Mullen, Bean Logistics and Distribution. Have you seen Wait, Callum? No, I haven't seen him today, actually. Probably got the bus to Shoreditch. He always gets the location confused. I'm not sure, because I don't think he has another job, but you know. Oh, there he is. Oh, hello, Callum. Beautiful Mo boy. Morning. Oh, and it look like, looks like he's on top of the agenda. Morning. Oh, look at that. Callum, you've taken care of number one for us. Would you like coffee? Oh. Would love some. I've got lots of coffee and Palmer violets. <laughs> for breakfast? Mm hmm Can I have a mug? <laughs> not in the Palmer violets. I don't know why I put my hands there. It's quite hot. That's enough, thank you, Callum. I want to sleep tonight. And some Space Raiders. Oh, thank you very much. I know you like these, so... I do. Wanna... Sweeties for breakfast. Would we what like a... Sweeties. Would we like a Can croissant? I have a coffee, please? Would you like a croissant? I would like a coffee first, please. <laughs> you just completely skip past me. Can you do the up and down, like, a little bit of skill, maybe? What awfully high pour. Oh! Be careful of your white jumper, Callum. There you go. Thank you so much. This is, amazing. this is like a quarter of a mug. <laughs> this is a quarter of a mug of Any time. Cheers. Do you want to keep doing that every morning? Because that's no. great. No? Okay. I think oh, Callum, but Callum, I just don't know if I could pour it like you, you know? Well, I appreciate that. I feel like you've got skill. a special I gift for it. I do have quite... And we would hate to waste it. I really appreciate that feedback, guys. I'll feed that into the next company email and we'll get that blasted out. Okay, great. Thanks, Callum. Make sure to CC and BCC and circle back. And BBL. <laughs> yeah, all of them above. Do you guys have a morning routine before work? Wake up, coffee, auto trader, zoopla, brush my teeth, stretches, posture stretches. Posture stretches. Work out two tins of salmon. Sardines, never salmon. Two tins of sardines. Why not salmon, may I ask? Uh, Just... Salmon, too expensive. Mm. In this cost of living. And crisis. sardines, brain food. The biggest boss figure I've ever had in my life is probably my head teachers. Mm. And I've had some pretty bad head teachers. I got framed for breaking someone's hand once. By uh, the head teacher? Yeah, because they, they were looking for a culprit for the uh, injury. Mm. And that culprit was me, but it was an unfair thing. Uh, my name's Callum Mullen, and I didn't commit genocide to my friend's hand. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. My client met GBH. My name's Callum Mullen and I didn't commit GBH to my friend in year And my client denies all knowledge of any genocide. No genocide was committed. For the sake of the uh, person, his name was I have only ever had good bosses. When I was working in accounting, I had a boss called Sean Ellis, one of the greatest guys ever. He called me maybe six months after I'd left the job to check that I'd left the job because he said, your talents are wasted in accounting, you should be doing something creative. And he literally remembered to call me like six months. We hadn't seen each other for about six months and he called me just to see that I was doing all right in life. So that's the kind of boss I've I had before. I love people like that. Great, nice. great person, great person. Big him up. Round of applause. I love you, Sean. We love you, Sean. Shout out, Sean. Sean has our heart. Oh, was that the fax machine? Yeah, I, I think heard it, was. it I heard it. All right, I'll go this time. Thanks, Claudia. All right, boys. So today, we have got Relationships. Relationships. I better draw up some notes about relationships. Thanks, Callum. I love that he's gone for a funky mix of upper and lower Yeah, case. I was going to say, this is great. Really spicing up my Wednesday. We're going Callum Mullen style today, folks. Necessity. How necessary are relationships? How does one spell necessity? It's all about comprehension. If I understand... Just put an S. We know what matter. this means. Bang. That looks like a W and I love it. We only take Ws. Yeah, exactly. Here at No Wrong Answers. Are we talking platonic or romantic? Monogamy. Polygamy. Soulmates. Do soulmates exist? 
Toxic relationships. Ooh. What is a healthy relationship? What is a toxic what? relationship? Yeah. Any more ideas? The relationship with oneself. Self-love. Self-love. Is that term overused? Do we even know what it means? What yeah. does it include? What does it include? Let's get into that. Let's get into that. Exactly. That's a very decent mind map. I think that I think... Sorry. I'm just gonna get yeah. this. Hello? Alright. <laughs> Stop. I'm in kind of in cloud yet. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Are you gonna share the video? Nobody. Agenda. Item one. Case study. Relationships. Boyfriends, because my friend is my friend um, is uh, think she's ugly, and I don't think. And and then I said, just copy me, just do confidence, just take a deep breath, and walk over to them, and then say, hey, hey, you, what, whatever your name is, Finley or yeah, or Perry, do you want to be my boyfriend? And they say, yes, just act. Confidence, let me watch. So I'm doing this, look. I just went over to him and then said, Hey you, um do you wanna do you wanna come to my birthday and do you wanna be my boyfriend? And they say, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this I, I could have watched that for ages, that was hilarious. That's that hilarious. little girl was literally me when I was younger. I can I can see that. Mm. I can see that. Just do confidence. Years ahead of our time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes a lot of people a long time to realise that when you're very confident in who you are, it makes you more attractive. You'll try to adapt yourself to what you think the person wants, whereas when you are very secure in yourself and very confident in yourself, that attracts people to you rather than you having to chase things. And she's got it already. Yeah. And to be honest, that extends past, like, past even romantic relationships and dating, like just in general, like walking to a job interview confident, you'd like you know your stuff. Approach friendships with confidence and confident in who you are, you'll attract genuine connections. She wants to see others to win people. with her. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? She's, Absolutely. Not, she's not a self centered. So I don't think that's a real a, one. She's threading the line very well. She very much reminds me of myself when I was younger. I did the same thing. I still, if I like a girl, I'd just be like, hey, I like your face. Like, <laughs> where do we go from here? Route um, one. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't want to wait for someone to shoot their shot. If I'm confident enough that I feel like they would give me that kind of energy back, then I'll just go up and say something. But even when I was younger, um, I created a game. It was it was almost like pass the parcel. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then you'd have to stop it at the song, so the person singing the song would have to stop it. Uh, but I would always get my friend to sing it, and I'd be like, "Stop it <laughs> on this point, so I can kiss him." <laughs> and I used to do that all the time. Or like, you how know, old were you when you did this? Like yeah. five, six. This is a terrifying level of creativity, planning, yeah, and execution yeah, yeah. at six years old. The production you know, values hey, of this game. Incredible. Remember, like it's those skipping games you used to play, yeah. and you used to be like, "Oh, if you stop on this letter when you're skipping." That means that's your future husband's name, right? I had a crush on this guy in primary school and I literally used to beat up girls if they did not stop the skipping rope. Wow. On the, mo on the guy's letter. The level yeah. of drive he possesses, second Thanks, to none. Guys. Thank you, thank you. Were you a bit of a gallist in primary school as well? I... My forehead has been the same size since I was eight years old. <laughs> Took me a long time to grow into. So I think what she was saying actually, actually really speaks to my, my inner child because I wasn't aware until I was like much older that people might find me attractive. I really, really struggled with a lot of that when I was growing up. And a lot of it was due to the way I was presenting myself because I just didn't think that about myself. So I just wasn't giving people the chance to think that about me, if that makes sense. Even if people did, mm. I didn't see it because I wasn't thinking those things about myself. That's so, why I had to start in that. Yeah, it's almost like that whole idea of like, how do you expect someone to love you if you can't love yourself? You got as Viv and as Gucci, that's what changed. <laughs> they put me in the Vivian Westman. Mm. <laughs> oh. Hello? Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I was looking for the uh, Lexus IS200 with the, you know, the limited slip diff and the Stage 2 Turbo. No, no, I, no, I need the Turbo. They're going to send it over. Some videos, bro. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> Great. Um, or E-R-M. A new state-of-the-art emotional response machine. Register your response as either joyful, happy, unsure uh. or sad. That's very cute. 
This is goals. This is goals. Oh. I've got tears in my eyes. Yeah, it's really weird growing older, kind of getting to adulthood and realising that your parents were just like you. Mm. Like adults figuring out life and yeah. they had you and had to take care they're, of you. It's, their, it's only their first time parenting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like, I feel like that realisation changed my relationship with my parents a lot. I feel like if my kids can feel the way I feel when they're my age, I'll feel like I've done a good job. I feel like everything that I have and that I do is because of what they did for me first kind of thing. There are so many things I haven't even had to consider or think about because they put themselves through stuff so that I wouldn't have to go through that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it's good to bless your parents if you ever get comfortable or if you get money. That was, there's no other correct answer than green. That yeah. was joyful. That Absolutely. Was so uh, that's that's joyful. the most joyful of things. Callum said that is goals and it is. Yeah, it yeah. Is. Like being able to pay off your parents. Or grandparents, what, yeah. whoever. The people who have sacrificed for you, basically. Yeah. Being able to take care of you. Yeah, <laughs> On the topic of parents, would you guys like to meet my mum? Yeah, we'll, I would we'll, love we'll, to meet we'll play a little game. We'll see whose parents pick up. Right, don't okay, go cool. uh, I'll, I'll video FaceTime my mum. Don't know if she'll oh, pick up. Oh, it's connecting. Hi. Yeah. I'm on Hi, the set. Mom. Hello, darling. Hi. These are, these are my presenters. You? Oh, hello, presenters. How are hello. you? Lovely to meet you. I'm Claudia. This is David. I'm David. Hello, David. Hello. Oh, his name, David. What's your name? Claudia, nice to meet you. I just wanted to say you've done a wonderful job with this guy. Really? Oh, thank you, you have. so yeah. much. He's Ten a out of 10 team. would recommend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's nice that you're all gelling together nicely. Oh, yeah, I love this. We feel like we've suit. known each other for ages. Oh, that's a great feeling. It's it a good is, feeling. It is. Well, it was stuff. lovely to meet you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. 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 Oh, she said love you all. Oh, I love, love that. It. Love, it. love your mum. There you love go. Your mom. There you go. My mum. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Oh, what's going on here? No, no. This is no. Either, this is New York or Paris? It's New York. Okay. New York. This back goes from New York. Unless this woman has a very, very profound obsession and love for rats, this makes no sense. I can't, I'm not gonna lie yet, I can't even be happy for the happiness of this relationship because the rat twitching on the side is just making me uncomfortable. I don't like it. I do not like that I'm at unsure all. about this whole video. I didn't like it at all. It's not very romantic. It's I, creative, it's very theatrical. Maybe. I feel like the main aim of this was just like, people look at us. This is not understanding your partner, because unless she loves rats. No, 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 it is understanding. She might be a rat it, it works. Yes. It works. So she clearly she loved it. But listen, I hope these two live happily ever after, far away from me. <laughs> Avoid New York. Sad. Sad. That's not sad, that's unsure. Sad. I am Seth, this is my I first love drink. This video. Oh. I am Seth the Grim, and this is my last drink. <laughs> yes. I am Simon, and this is my first drink. This is Simon, and this is my last drink. This is my first drink. Right up, Lucas. Fair enough. I am Pride, and this is my first drink. Are you going to do this? First drink, yes. I'm the bride and this is my last drink. Partying with family is, is very unusual. I went to a wedding with my parents this year and seeing them boogie to like 80s music and I never see my parents get drunk. It was very weird. And my mum like dragging my dad in to the dance floor. It was mental. But I think I feel like partying with family could be really cool. The last wedding I went to, everybody from like my culture, like it was very like it was the traditional English ceremony, but then the receptionist stuff, there was a lot of Ghanaian culture in it. Yeah. Being around family and like feeling like, I feel like Ghana in Sheffield. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and that's super fun. Like, I love it. Oh, this is really joyful. fun though. Joyful. joyful. Yeah, this is great. Joyful. Whack it. <laughs> hmm. Did you eat yet? Yeah, I ate a little bit ago. Where'd you end up getting food from? Just found uh, takeout from Antonio's. Who wanted to go there, Haley? Mm. Eesh. Haley, the girl you took out to Antonio's earlier today? Oh, he's dusted. What are you talking about? So you're going to tell me that you have no idea who Haley is, no idea what I'm talking about, and you weren't with her today at Antonio's getting food? 
don't know which one of your friends you're listening to, but no. They love to throw no, that one. That's, that's, that's nothing to do with any of my friends, as if I did literally did not see you in there today. You definitely didn't. I definitely did, though. I definitely did. You can go f yourself, honestly. Do you know what? Men love to throw the blame of, I don't know what your friend's been telling you, but that's not true. They're just trying to separate us. They don't want to see us win. <laughs> they don't care about us. Babes, 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 you're going to believe your eyes over me. You're, you're I'm gonna... telling you the truth. You're going to believe your corneas. Oh, why don't you just let yourself be happy? Yeah, they love to shift the blame. <laughs> Trust is very, 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 very important. Even if it's broken in the slightest way, you then start to question in question every other thing or comparing it to that one moment they lie to you and you're like, ooh. And you start remembering at the back of your head, they're like, okay, but if you're lying unprovoked about food, what may, what's gonna say you're not gonna lie when I ask you about cheating on me or where have you been that night? So yeah, trust is really important. And I think it's no so easy to, to break trust, but to try and build it off. But after, I don't think it's ever gonna get back to the same point. You can just kind of find a common ground. But yeah. I'm, do you know what? This makes me happy. She stood uh, her ground, she said what she felt. Joyful because good for her. Yeah, she didn't let. She, he tried to. So it's very sad for her. It's sad. That's what's but No, but she's better off without him, isn't she? Do you think oh. he has lit? And this is someone who knows her worth enough to be like, yeah, outs, outs. Do you think the way that she did it was mature? Yeah, because I would have just. I, I promise you, when I saw them in Antonio's, I would have done something. <laughs> in, in, in the restaurant, I would have waited. Yeah, no, because she, 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 she waited for him to come home, confronted him directly, didn't listen to him, like, kicked him out. Didn't, like, she wasn't, she wasn't rude. She had, she had every. every reason to be rude or belligerent or anything. And she gave him the opportunity to be honest. To explain himself. She actually gave him the opportunity to be honest and I'm sure if he was honest, the reaction wouldn't have been as bad as it is this, being like, oh, go f yourself, this, that, and the other. That's, quite, would... that's quite mild. Yeah. I'm surprised she didn't throw nothing. I would have taken that glass, smashed it, eat. I feel like we can, because Callum's a bit unsure. We're saying joyful, but happy can do it. Are you happy to meet her happy? Oh. oh. Let's all say this. Agenda. Item three, expert consultant. Let's see who we're talking to today. Hi. 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 Hello. Hello, expert consultant. Thank you for joining us. Who are you and what do you do? My name is Sophia Smith Gaylor. I am a journalist, author, and TikTok content creator. And I've written the book, Losing It, which is all about debunking sex myths. Do you feel as if there is an assumption that relationships are contingent on sex? Especially nowadays, when we hear way more conversations about things like sex positivity, there's the idea that sex positivity and feeling positive and confident about sex means that we need to be having it all the time, or means that we have to kind of be relentlessly orgasming and that everything's got to be pleasurable. And obviously, if that's how you want sex to look and be in your life, that is wonderful. But we have to remember to always be very inclusive when we talk about sex and look at people's different experiences, where it is they're coming from, where it is they're going, and um, take into account that there are lots of people whose vision of sex or how, how regular sex may be in any given week or month looks very different to another person's. Pleasure is a really difficult word and it shouldn't be. We talk about pleasure in loads of different other contexts. We talk about pleasure when we talk about food. We talk about pleasure when we talk about hobbies and having fun. And yet when it comes to sex, for example, the curriculum for relationships and sex education in England, which what word is missing? Pleasure. It's really likely that if we can identify that platforms and governments struggle to use this word when they're talking about sex, normally from an unfounded, evidence-baseless fear that talking about sex and pleasure is going to somehow sexualize people that we shouldn't be. So young people who shouldn't be having sex yet, oh, we can't tell them that sex is good, right? No, that is so not the way to prepare young people with a full knowledge base before and as they're entering sexual maturity. and should be empowered to define their sex lives when they are ready. So having established how important pleasure is, what would you define pleasure as? Pleasure, I would say, is not only about orgasms, it's really important that uh, an orgasm hopefully hopefully is going to be part of your sexual diet and something that you and any sexual partner that you have 
takes into account, but ultimately it is not the goal of sex. It's really important that everybody leaves a sexual scenario feeling like a lot more than only pleasure has been taken into account. So that's how I'd want to talk about pleasure when it comes to sex. And another thing is that we still have lots of lots of gaps to bridge over when it comes to understanding uh, orgasms, especially when it comes to uh, the heterosexual orgasm gap. It's a heterosexual gap in which uh, couples who are heterosexual, a man and a woman, uh, research has found sort of time and again that it's far less likely that the woman is going to orgasm in sexual scenarios than their male partner. Why is that? That when I talk about equity in sex, that is one of the, the gender gaps in se sex that needs solving. So I wanted to ask you, could you just briefly give us like two or three of the top myths in the UK surrounding sex? One of them would be conversations that we still have around virginity, which theoretically should be a word long lost from our vocabulary. When we look at first time sex and first time sexual experiences and what they should be, we should no longer be clinging to the idea, for example, that sex has to be penetrative, another myth that I tackle. So the idea that, oh, are you a virgin? Are you not a virgin? When did you lose it? You're probably thinking of one defining moment that was likely penetrative. How is How does penetrative sex remain the, the nadir or goal of sex? Uh, especially when for a significant portion of the population, clitoral stimulation is, for example, more likely to lead to orgasm than penetration. 40% of young women and 26% of young men do not feel that their first time happened at the right time. Uh, so that is an example of how we need to get better at talking about early sexual experiences and how we should be feeling around them. Sophia, it's been lovely to talk to you and learn from you. Thank you for your time. Bye. 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 For more of Woo's No Wrong Answers, subscribe now. Feeling empowered. Yes, that was very interesting. I'd say I'd agree with most of what she said. Even like things like talking about celibacy and stuff, sort of people might think if I choose celibacy or whatever, then I'm going down a religious route, but the two are separate. Yeah, I've personally been celibate before for nine months, and whenever I told people I was celibate, they kind of just assumed that there was like a really, really deep, meaning behind why I chose to do this or I went through a traumatic experience and it was like, right, she doesn't, she hates sex, mm. that's why she doesn't want to have it. And I was just like, I'm just not drawn to it at this period in time, do you know what I mean? Like, through that period of my life, I was just focusing on myself and sex just wasn't my priority whatsoever. Mm. So, um, yeah, like she said, there's various reasons as to why you might choose celibacy. I think being celibate for nine months was... It was great. It was great. It was. I think it was because of the fact that I knew I was the person choosing not to have sex. If it was a situation where I was like, oh, I'm just not having sex, like no one wants to have sex with me, I've not had sex for nine months, then I would have been a bit like, mm, what's going on? But I was consciously making that decision um, and it made me feel really empowered. It made me feel like I completely took control over my own body. And um, it just kind of made me appreciate everything else within relationships as well, rather than just sex. And it kind of made me understand that like, as important as sex is, I really don't care about it if it's not on like a, comfort level. Like, for example, I could do one night stands. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I can't do something like that. I need to have some form of relationship with the person prior to me having sex with them. Not necessarily a romantic relationship, but I need to be comfortable enough around them for that if something goes wrong while we're having sex, I can laugh about it or be mm. like, oh, nah. Do you know what I mean? So I don't it kind of taught you that yeah. it's a part of the relationship rather than the goal of the relationship. Yeah, the, mm. exactly that. Hit the nail on the head. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> she knows her stuff. Yeah, she does. That was very factual facts. Do you know what point really resonated with me was the when she said about the the whole idea of like men being able to um, finish more often than women, and uh, I think that's absolutely true because a lot of the time when I've slept with men, I feel like after after the deed is done, mm. I feel like I've f them, not the other way round, <laughs> because I'm usually the one who walks off and I'm I haven't had an orgasm, I haven't finished, I'm not satisfied, I still have to go home and do what I need to do to satisfy myself, whereas they leave happy or they fall asleep. And I'm just like, yeah, great, good for you. That's but very unfair. Yeah, it is unfair. I'm what, I'm 24 and I think I've had maybe about five orgasms that were done by someone else and not myself. That's grossly unfair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, yeah, this deserves a minute of silence because it's very sad. <laughs> Callum, that was very disrespectful. I was just drinking. Agenda.
Item four, report. What have you learned today and how do you feel? So to sum up, take care of your mum, pay your mum's debts and FaceTime your mum. Well said, well said. Ready, David? I've got some thoughts. Relationships, they make us tick. Romantic, platonic, our communities nurture our spirits. And as we make sure to appreciate our relationships with others, we should never neglect our relationships with ourselves. Love thyself so thyself can love others. OK, so my takeaway for today is very, very important, but I don't really know how to word it. It's a very sensitive matter. I don't want to upset anyone. I want to make sure I say it perfectly. Uh, and it's something that I've really been meaning to get off my chest for a while now. And I think now is the right time, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. Men don't know where the clit is. Agenda. Any other business? <laughs> I shouldn't think I could do that. I could do it, I think. Maybe I'll be Get it out with the tongue. I don't think I could. I think it's vulgar. Do you like Woo's No Wrong Answers? Well, why don't you watch more? Go to planetwoo.co. Oh, wait, no. 